Hey guys, welcome to an extended Pixel Byte. I'm Andrew with Liminal Space, and I'm here to bring you an extended presentation from the guys at Airy. Airy came to Cleveland for the very first time, and we had the honor of hosting them in our shop. Special thanks to Shape With Us for filming the event so that we could share it with you. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Uh, it's our first time in Cleveland. My name is Gunther Nösner. I work on the camera side, lens side, everything else that's on the dark side. We also make lights, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but we didn't bring any today. So, um, yeah, we brought the Alexa 35, which I know is already landed in this market. Um, and uh, this camera has been delayed a little bit because of COVID and everything else that we know. Um, but um, it's finally here. It slowly starts to deliver. We have a ton of orders. And I will talk a little bit about it, what makes it so special, um, what it does. Um, and um, we had a very successful launch for this camera, meaning we got so many orders, we couldn't believe it. So it's very... It's going to take a while to build these cameras and for them to come out here. Um, so I will start with um, our lineup of cameras, which um, the Alexa 65, there's a camera for every format. And there's a reason for it. Every camera, there's a best function, best form factor for it. The Alexa 65 is probably the oldest one. The first time that we made a large format sensor um, in a digital camera. There are only about 70 cameras in the world. They're only accessible through area rental. Um, there is obviously the Alexa LF, which is the large format, which doesn't have as big as a, of a sensor like the Alexa 65, but it's also the same. It's a large format sensor. It's the same sensor that's in the mini LF. Um, then the Alexa Mini, everybody knows, has been out for already for five, six years. It's a very popular camera that was always a camera that did less than traditional big cameras. This Alexa 35 is the first camera that is a small form factor camera that has all the functions built into a small body. And then obviously we have the Amira camera, which there's an Amira right here. Um, there will be an Amira Live that you see here. The Amira Live aims for live concerts, live events capture. We will see more of these arrive beginning of next year. And um, I will start with a little guided tour. This is a video that was launched initially, so some of you may know it already. It summarizes what this camera does the best. Um, and my colleague, Art Adams from the West Coast, has actually um, done the voiceover for it. You may recognize him. Let me see if I get him here. Let's find the mouse. And here we go. Alexa 35 is the next step into the future of digital cinematography. If you already know and trust Alexa image quality, we're now making the things you love about it even better. And with a native 4.6K Super 35 format sensor, Alexa 35 is compatible with all your favorite spherical and anamorphic lenses. Alexa 35 extends our legendary highlight performance by an additional one and a half stops. Add an additional stop of shadow detail, and Alexa 35 delivers 17 measurable stops of overall dynamic range. Not only is this more highlight range than on any other digital camera on the market, it exceeds the highlight capabilities of color negative film. Use this extra headroom to create softer, smoother highlights 
that roll off to a degree that film could never achieve. Or use it to protect highlights that will hold up to extreme HDR remastering in 10 or 15 years. In terms of sensitivity, Alexa 35 is the fastest airy camera ever made. It digs deeper into shadows and performs better at higher EIs, maintaining color accuracy throughout the entire exposure range. The optional enhanced sensitivity mode produces even cleaner images in low light. It's hard to improve on a good thing, but that's exactly what we've done with our new Reveal Color Science. Alexa 35 easily captures many complex colors that most other cameras simply can't see. And the steps between hues are much finer. Cinematographers tell us that they've never seen color reproduced with the same complexity and subtlety. While colorists say that the increased color separation gives them more control when grading any kind of image at any brightness level. And of course, Skin tones of every type look amazing. Digital color is often either beautiful or accurate. Alexa 35 delivers both. Every Airy camera has a default native texture. A texture can be thought of in terms of contrast and grain in a film stock. For the first time, Alexa 35 lets you choose from a variety of airy textures that tune how the camera sees the world. Some enhance landscapes, others soften faces or reduce color in shadow noise. Choose a texture that suits your creative approach or a specific environment. You decide the right combination of contrast and grain for your story. Textures are applied at the earliest stages of image processing. This means that your digital film stock can't be changed in post. Alexa 35 is the smallest full-featured production camera ever made by Airy. Fast and easy to use, it embodies the rugged build quality you would expect from Airy with a new accessory range that can outfit the camera for any shooting situation. We asked filmmakers around the world to push Alexa 35 to its limits, and they captured the amazing images you've just seen. This is only the beginning. Now, it's your turn. So this was the guided tour. Let me go back to my, is the other thing here, back? No, uh, full, no, hold on a second. Where's my mouse? So the idea of these um, images that you have seen here, we had built about 50 of these prototypes, pre-production camera that, that were, um, sent beginning of this year to filmmakers across the globe um, and they were asked to uh, come up with a little short under the theme encounters and uh, we have about 11 short films that all came out from different places but obviously not everybody knew what this camera could do also with the textures there's just i think two clips that two films that have used the one of these new texture that was available. The rest didn't really touch textures at that point. Uh, I have some of these clips I can show you guys later. Um, no, i am lost my little presentation. One second. Uh, how the heck is this not happening? Uh, escape. I don't see it. Uh, okay, this should be a slideshow. 
Okay, here we go. So, um, so this was um, the first departure from the original LF3 sensor. This means also the, the sensor has a complete new design. Uh, that's why we were able to get more sensitivity, more dynamic range out of this thing. It's a super 35 size sensor. That means you will not be able to shoot large format. It has been embraced by lots of rental houses that have tons and tons of super 35 glass. You know, so you will have the mini LF, the LF, that will be able to shoot large form, and you have Super 35, which we believe will coexist side by side for a long time. Um, we have um, essentially 17 stops of dynamic range. Okay, we're, we added a stop and a half of dynamic range on the highlights and about a stop in the shadows. And again, for you, for many of you that don't know what a stop means, at every stop light doubles, right? So imagine you're going from 16 to 17 stops. Now you have twice the amount of light that you have already at 17. So it's quite a lot of um, improvement there. Also, um, you have one little, it's always 17 stops, except when you go and push to 6400, where we have only 16 stops of dynamic range, right? So you have about 11.4 stops of highlights before you start to clip. Um, this is a still taken one of these underwater, underwater shots where the, the red uh, emergency light, uh, you see it clearly clipping. This was when a, with, a, with a small DSLR camera. It turns orange there. Um, you didn't see that in the actual film where it's really not clipping at all and it stays red. This is an image from a grab from the film itself that shows 709 in the highlights, there is no clipping there. This is now um, graded for the shadows. You see his face. Clearly, the information is there. This is what log C would look like. And um, false color. Also, you see there is no clipping here, even though you have this uh, emergency light um, that is super, super bright. So the camera allows you to do more mistakes. And you can correct these mistakes much easier because you have much, much wider range. You don't have to bracket your light so much. You can just go and you have the camera can capture way more information than what the human eye can see, right, in one scene. Okay. So um, also what we had to change with this camera, because it has more dynamic range than the previous sensor, we had to change... Um, how the light in our lens mounts, how excessive light. So if you have lenses that have a big illumination circle, you have lots of light that is uh, hitting areas on the outside of the sensor that would then reflect back and you end up with not so black blacks, right? So you're losing the inability to kind of go into your shadows you know, because it, your blacks look basically milky, especially when you're on an OLED display. You know, you don't get these clean blacks. So we had to um, come up with a stray light uh, control and the new PL mounts and the PL adapter, they have stray light control. There's a special paint that um, also absorbs the light more and you are able to really dig deep into your blacks. Um, there are... Uh, a variety of mounts available, the LPL mount, obviously. If you use um, lenses that, that have the LPL mount, this is the PL adapter. The EF mount with the LBUS already had that built in, and we have two new mounts, both PL mounts. One has an LBUS, one has a Hero support. Um, it doesn't mean that you cannot use existing mounts from the Alexa Mini or the Amira. They will work, but you will get less clean blacks, right? So that's to keep in mind, because they all will fit physically on these cameras. It's the same whole pattern that you have on the, Alex on the Alexa Mini. So we also have something new here. For the first time, we have actually in-camera denoising option, right? An option. There are some, um, some um, exposure indexes that you can select intentionally to allow you to denoise an image. 
And how does this work in practical uh, terms? It means the camera will record a second image. So let's say in the first phase of the 180 degree shot, it records one image and then records a second image. It will then analyze these two images, identify the noise, subtract the noise and throw the other image away. So that has a drawback, it means you cannot record more than 60 frames a second and you cannot record more than 180 degree shutter. So you have to kind of know, okay, you want to do the de uh, denoising in camera, you have to live with these limitations. If not, you go to a regular ISO level without the ES. ES stands for enhanced sensitivity. And then you're good to go to the maximum frame rate. So here's an example of um, an image that was shot with 6400 with a default texture. And it's hard to see from where you guys are, but here is the 6400 with the noising. You'll see when you get close that there's less noise in this column. And this is, combines the 6400 ES with a shadow texture. There's a close up here. Um, and you'll see the shadow texture desaturates color in low noise, right? Noise shows up as random color pixels and it looks rather electronic. And when you then desaturate that area on top of it, actually the image looks way more real and not so digital. And that's what you have on the right side here. Uh, in this example, this was the, the, the short that was shot um, with the siren underwater. The day ran out, they wanted to do a shot at the beach. Um, they had no lights other than the, the fire that they made. And this was shot with 6400 ES. And this is the final result um, that is then denoised, obviously. It is, there is a lot of noise in there. Uh, I can also show you this clip later. So obviously with this camera having 17 stuff of dynamic range, we had to change the whole color workflow also. There is a new log C4 because log C3, what we had up to this point, can only take a certain amount of code value and uh, log C4 would not fit on this curve. So the curve is slightly different. There is also um, a every color match. That means these cameras, if you have multiple cameras on set, the cameras will match to each other much better than any Alexa or Mini LF, all, all the sensors before. Um, and the reveal color science, uh, what, what also happens in camera, there's a new DeBayer algorithm, there's um, uh, a new uh, color gamut, there's a new Loxy4. The LUT itself has also changed from how we were dealing with LUTs. This can also be processed in post if you have an Alexa Mini and you want to combine it with an Alexa 35, right? So you will most likely not get matching images on set when you hook up a monitor to one and, and the other camera, but if you're recording every RAW with an Alexa Mini or Mini LF, you could apply that post workflow that, that reveal color science in post, and then you will get a much better match. So that's just something to, uh, to remember because there, on the beginning, lots of jobs require two, three, four cameras. There's not many out here, so we'll, you, will, you will have a mix and match on the beginning. So um, these are the color spaces. This is the 709 color space. Again, what you saw here earlier, this is a 709 monitor. This is not HDR. Um, then we have a REC 2020 space. This is the ACES space. And the Alexa 35 white gamut is, is slightly bigger than the REC 2020 space. It's not as big as the ACES space, which is good because the ACES space has these virtual colors that don't exist. The human eye cannot see in this space. And these values, when they're reinterpreted into colors that we see they end up to be negative value, which screws up how they're interpreted. So the colors with this camera are more, I would say more accurate, right, than what we had before. So you can also have very strange looking colors like 
cans of beer and stuff that looks really funky, and it will look just like they are. So these are the two log curves. Again, this was log C3, and then obviously it had to be a flatter curve to fit more values on there. It also means that your, eight, your medium gray, uh, the 18% gray is, um, is lower, right? So it means here's a log C3 image here. This is a log C4 image. You see it's darker just because that curve is more tilted. But once you convert it into a 709 image or HDR image, they will look the same. And you'll see also here the, it's less green on the right than on the left. The older sensor tended to be a little bit greenish, so you had to always take some green out. It's more, more true to the actual color right now. So there are three sensor modes. And then from these three sensor modes, there are different sensor recording resolution that the camera can go to. And overall, it's one is open gate, then there's 16 by 9 mode, and there's a 6 by 5 mode for anamorphic. Um, the question for anamorphic and Netflix always comes up because Netflix always has the, has the 4K mandate. But when it comes to anamorphic, anamorphic projections is usually a circle, so it's rather a square. And uh, you never have 4,000 pixels. So Netflix mandate for original shows, original production, is always 3820, um, 3840 by 2160 which is about 8.3 megapixels. We have in this 6x5 mode, we have about 9.3 megapixels, so it's plenty to, to cover the Netflix demand for anamorphic. So the airy textures. So the term texture is also a little bit confusing because it, it means more than just textures. And there are currently about eight textures in the camera if somebody feels this is too much, they can just ignore it, set the camera to a default texture, and that means you don't mess with it. We always had a default texture before in all our cameras, but we didn't really tell you about it, or we didn't let you mess with it, right? And now we're, we let you mess around with it a little bit. And what does that mean? There is a naming convention that we try to simplify it, for you so you understand a little bit more what that means. And you'll see there's basically a letter, and there's three numbers, and there's a name. So the first letter stands for the size of the grain, how big the grain is. If you think the alphabet, A is the smallest grain, Z would be the largest grain. Um, then the first number is how much grain you have. Nine would be a lot of grain, one would be very little grain. The next number would be um, contrast of fine detail, right? So anything that's fine, 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 let's say if you shoot a face, you have lots of pores, skin, hair, and you don't want faces to have high contrast, you want that number to be low. And the next, the last number is coarse contrast. Um, so it's kind of, then we give it a name, and this, the cosmetic one, this is actually the, the value for cosmetic. If you know you shoot a lot of close-ups and you want faces to look more pleasing, that would be the look for you. And there's some examples here. So this is the default on the left and cosmetic on the right. And you'll see also by the numbers what it means, right? So K and P, right? So there is actually bigger grain over there in the cosmetic because P is after K, right? So, um, and then we have the same um, amount of noise, uh, noise grain, sorry. Um, then we have lower contrast on the right, right? So if you see here, um, it, it is less harsh on the right than it is on the left. And again, these things are very subtle. So if you need, you can't look at it over here or in a small monitor, you really need a big projector or you need a 4K monitor where you kind of look at these things before you make a decision to use them, because these textures, they are burnt in, they happen actually before we even get to every raw, right? So if you select a high clarity look, which is, I think it's this one here. So 
This would be for landscapes, right? If you want things to pop really high contrast, it will, would probably look not so nice on faces, right? But, but it's something that is already baked into the air raw file and it's baked in the ProRes file. Keep that in mind when you work with these. If you don't care to work with them, work with the default one and you're good, you know? So this, <coughs> this one is the default one on the left and nostalgic. This is probably the most noticeable when you look at it on a small monitor because you will see a lot of grain and it looks a little bit analog. That's why we call it nostalgic. Well, for film lovers that want to make it look like film, this looks more like film. So, um, and I have also a few clips later I can show you um, in motion rather than just showing you these two stills. And when you're closer, it's probably easier to see when you're, when you're up here. Um, we also have in this camera here, the look library. The look library that we, are, we know from the Alexa Mini there were 87 looks. They were all, um, they were based on log C3 before. Now these in this camera are all based on log C4. And there's a little advantage now, instead of having only three intensities of these looks, there was one that was low, medium and strong before. Now we have the option to kind of dial them in in 10 percentage levels. It gives you a little bit more control, creative control, also decide, hey, I want this look, but I don't want it. I want it only at 20% or something versus uh, you had only the limited choice of three before, right? So this is now much, much, um, um, yeah, more choices to, to, uh, for you guys. Um, also, I mentioned before, we changed how we are working with the, the look files. And in the example from before, Amira or Alexa Mini, Mini LF, the creative intent, basically a look to be a certain look, and the conversion to a color space, me being SDR, 79 or HDR monitor, it was one file. And you had to create a look file for an HDR monitor. You had to create a different look file for an SDR monitor. You could never have both at the same time, right? It was either or, right? Or you ran it to a DAT card and the DAT would then run it through his box, right? The log C image and then would get one image that was going to an HDR mode. So now we changed how this is done. We're basically separating the creative intent. We call this log to log conversion. This is essentially the creative look that you wanted this to be. It does not have the conversion to a color space yet. Okay, that means you can then later, either in post by saying, okay, now I'm gonna apply a node for HDR and then you you're looking at this stuff at an HDR monitor. Or the two outputs of the camera, you can attach an HDR monitor to one output and an SDR monitor to the other output. As long as these outputs are correctly configured, you can monitor HDR and SDR at the same time from one camera. So this was not possible before. There will be questions in the beginning and mistakes. Um, there is this email, digitalworkflow at airy.de. Remember that? If you ever need to send questions there, they're the guys in Munich, they should be able to help you. Um, this is also a size comparison, uh, the Alexa Mini. Versus Alexa 35, it's slightly bigger. You have carbon on the left and aluminum on the right. I would say there's a third of a pound heavier here, but it's when I take everything off, you see there, there's not much of a difference and it's a fully blown camera. We have the heat sink in the middle. You, there's literally no electronics in the middle. Um, electronics are wrapped around this heat sink and it's a very efficient cooling. Just make sure you're not blocking the bottom because it draws air from the bottom and blows it up to the top. We have the same NDs that we had in the Alexa Mini LF, uh, two, four, and six. We have a serial port here on the front. Um, this is to allow you to use any kind of serial inputs like devices like Cinetape, UDM. Uh, you will no longer need this L-cube when you work with the Alexa 35, this was nothing else than converting serial 
into LBUS. So you will not need this anymore. Uh, there's also a viewfinder port on the front. Um, there's a second viewfinder on the back. And there's an LBUS on the body on the bottom right. This is useful when, let's say, Panavision, they make their own mount. They will take off this mount. They're not going to have an LBUS now when they put their mount on. The fact that you have now still on the camera, you can still use airy motors and plug directly into the camera, which you didn't have that option before. The viewfinder is the same that we had on the Mini LF. The, the, simple, the hardware is, is exactly the same. The advantage is because this camera now can do HDR and SDR at the same time, we, can also, we have also the processing power to send an HDR image to the OLED in here, which you can monitor HDR here, which you cannot do on the Mini LF, even though it's the same viewfinder. The Mini LF does not have the processing power to do that. Uh, here we have the option to toggle on and off. We have on the side uh, this little mini menu with a with a little di uh, dial button that lets you change settings if this camera is on a, on a drone, on a steady cam where nobody uses the viewfinder and you can quickly change the basic parameters, frame rate, ISO, um, exposure index and also NDs. Or you can turn on the Wi-Fi. There's a screen saver where you can have the ND displayed so you always know what NDs internally uh, turned on. Um, the media is the same media that we have on the Alexa Mini LF, um, with the exception that there is now a two terabyte version of it. Physically, it's exactly the same. Um, the two terabyte is only needed when you're recording high speed in Airy RAW. Anything higher than 60 frames, you will need this one. If you don't record Airy RAW, uh, you can record with, to the one terabyte um, media, which is, um, has half the writing speed as this one has. So the recording formats, there's about 19 formats. And it's important to know that you, you select your sensor mode, but then there's different resolutions for each sensor mode. So up here is the Airy Raw modes, and this is ProRes. And you'll see basically you can record open gate in Airy Raw, you can record open gate in ProRes, you can record 16 by 9 Airy Raw, you can record a downsampled version of that 16 by 9 in ProRes, you can record native. 16 by 9, okay, this is um, 4096 by 2304. And then there is um, a ProRes version of that as available. And then there is, you can downsample this to UHD, you can downsample it to HD or, or 2K, right? So, but you have to make sure that you're selecting the correct one depending on what is being asked from you. There's a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, every raw. This is usually for Netflix. Netflix always wants to have two to one aspect ratio. You guys know why? Where's my phone? phone. The phone is a two to one aspect ratio. And they, their majority of Netflix shows are watched on the phone. <laughs> That's the reason why Netflix always asks you to shoot two to one. <laughs> so um, there's obviously a ProRes version of that. Now we're in the anamorphic mode. Um, there's Airy Raw Anamorphic 6x5. There's a ProRes version of that. And then there is one version that also squeezes in camera for you. Um, then there is a 1x1. One one. This is also Anamorphic 3K. There's a ProRes version. And there's one that squeezes it for you. This one is an interesting format. If you're aiming to deliver a 16 by 9 image, but you're recording with anamorphic two-time lenses, right? You can use this format, which ends up exactly with 178 image, but you have uh, the correct aspect ratio um, of a disqueezed image. And this is for close-ups. <laughs> so, no, this is similar to Super 16 mode, which I don't know how many people really will use it. Uh, we had some fashion people 
that had requested this because they think then that you see more grain, it's more like like Super 16-ish. Um, I haven't really played with this myself yet to see what, um, what it really looks like. So um, on the side of the camera, there's an Ethernet port, which we had from the beginning of the Alexa Classic, uses that same cable. The difference is now this, that this Ethernet protocol that is here is super, super fast. And also, if you're working, working in a mixed reality environment with screen and Unreal Engine, where they kind of have this uh, Unreal Engine change the background as you're doing camera moves or positioning changes or lens changes, it will be able to take the data that the camera spits out through the Ethernet port and feed it into this Unreal Engine. So it kind of does the parallax adjustment, does any kind of things that you need for, um, for these uh, mixed reality environments. So that is, as, for the first time, it's fast enough for them to use in that environment. So on the back, we have um, a um, electronic interface for, for, um, for a power distribution module, which is this thing, or an audio extension module, which is this thing here. And um, it is either or, you couldn't attach both of them at the same time because they would block the contacts anyways. Um, but, um, and then you have on the back, if you don't use either of these modules, you can use the battery B mount adapter that goes on the back of the camera, literally just like this. And then now you can use um, B mount batteries directly on the camera. So most production, People, as we know it, will probably use this power distribution module. It gives you seven outputs of power. You know, there's four 24-volt outputs, two 12-volt outputs, another 12-volt output here on the, on the bottom. And this will most likely live on the camera. If you're a documentary person or cinema verite, you will most likely work with the audio module. This is like a little mini amp. The camera by itself only accepts line level. So it has to run to a mixer before you feed into the camera, unless you're using this. Then you can also feed in mic levels in here and it, it, it brings them up to line level. Um, there is an option for Anton Bauer batteries, 26 volt batteries, if you use an adapter like this. Um, obviously uh, for, for rental houses that have these, this is a choice. Um, there is Wi-Fi built in here. There's two little antennas on the back. This also lets you control the camera with a new app. It's called the Airy Companion app. Right now it's out in open beta. It will be hopefully soon be available as an app. It's a free app. It will be able to control this camera or a mirrors or minis or mini LF. Any Airy camera that has Wi-Fi capability and camera access protocol, you will be able to control with this app. It's way more responsive than the web interface that still works also with this camera. Um, and yeah, there's two versions of hardware. Right now we have the lightweight version built out here. The production version is kind of what you see here. Um, and again, it depends really what you do with these cameras how you work with them. And uh, also because this camera now is new, uh, new workflow, new everything, it will also require the latest software versions of all the programs that you guys work with in post. Okay, so make sure if you work with this, you have the latest version because then it will support the new MXF RAP ProRes or Airy Raw. Um, there is a new um, um, Airy reference tool. This is a free app that you can get on the web. Um, runs on Macs and it combines the Airy Raw Converter, Airy Color Tool and Airy Meta Extract all in one tool rather than have three, three separate, separate applications. Uh, there's a new Airy Raw Transcoder available. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for part two, where we go in depth into Aries lens control system and all the amazing features that has to offer. As always, like and subscribe.